what's up beautiful people listen to Rima. welcome to the channel today we're going to be checking this video and it's titled candice owens mega Markle is princess of blm <laughs> duchess wanted to deconstruct royal family hmm. interesting i'm excited to check this one out here with candice i've got to say and this is an old clip of um candice talking about um the successes yeah i'm excited to check this one out here with the galaxy let's check it out Well, for this edition of GBN America, I'm very pleased to be joined by somebody who's a good friend of mine. She's a best-selling New York Times-selling author. She's got the Candace Owens Show on the Daily Wire. Yeah, it's the one and only Candace Owens joins me. Candace, welcome to GBN America. What a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Not at all. Now, between our two countries over the centuries... We've exported many things to you, and you've exported many things to us. And I always think when it comes to trends and co food and all the things we do, America generally does things first and we do things second. But a recent export from the United Kingdom to America is a young couple. They were part of the royal family. They were their royal highnesses. They're now just the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. And we've exported them, Candace, to you, and they're living happily on the West Coast of America uh, and it would seem that after the quite shock cancer diagnosis of the king that Harry only spent 24 hours in the country a half hour meeting with his dad no reconciliation with his brother and he's coming back to you in America are you pleased to see him return we are not pleased to see him return. We certainly were not pleased to see him here at all. I was very content with them being put in Canada, but I obviously knew that they would end up in LA because that was Megan's dream. Her dream was to be an A-lister and she was unable to make it to those A-list parties on uh, the basis of her own merit as an actress. You know, she wasn't a very good actress. And so she figured out how to maneuver that by marrying a prince who the only way to say it is he's just not as intelligent as her. He's not reading the situation as clearly as other people are reading it. And he has been subjected to her manipulation. And I do also want to say this because it's really important of why their, their story became so big. And, you know, her using the Black Lives Matter movement, which was very big at that time before people start to understand stood that really what they were advocating for were Marxist principles. It's, it's why she became the princess of BLM because, you know, what's one of the biggest principles of Marxism, the breakdown of family, black lives matter mm. on their charter stated that they wanted to deconstruct the nuclear family. Well, Meghan Markle wanted to deconstruct a family, right? And she was going to pretend that it was for something noble racism. It wasn't. So it was really because she wanted fame and she wanted wealth. And you know, I don't want to say that Prince Harry was an unwitting participant. I, I think, he obviously is not as smart as her, but also he liked the fame and he liked the attention in a certain way as well. And we attention, had a very, yes. very, very sad circumstance that played out here. So I'm not entirely shocked that he didn't spend that much time with his father. I have not been holding my breath for them to unify as a family because some of the things that were done, you know, lit quite literally selling your family for profit, it's unheard of, but it's, it's, it's a Marxist belief that there's something more noble. There's something that the state wants you to believe in that's more noble. And in that circumstance, it's racism must be fought. But in reality, what's buried underneath is a state incentive to make people disloyal to the people that they should be the most loyal to. So no sympathy for Prince Harry, but a lot of sympathy for King Charles. Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult for the Queen to forgive. Absolutely. They love the attention and all that they're getting. So, of course, what is marketable, that is what they're going to lean towards because it's not making sense. And Candice is actually right with what she said here because I'm trying to understand, like, like all of a sudden, where this victimhood is coming from, where this blackness is coming from, where the talk about... Like, it don't make sense. Honestly, the both of them, and I've said it before, the both of them are... That's, um, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, they are, best, they are, they are both um, a perfect match. They fit each other. They are like more like the yin and yang of themselves because, I mean, it's just a mirrored reflection of who the both of them are because, obviously, just like I said, he, 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 wasn't in, he, he knows what he's doing. It's not like he was um, coerced into this type of relationship or coerced into being with her. He knows what what he was getting into or what he was doing so it was just a perfect avenue to be like okay yeah um 
let's get into um, bed with this person or let him get into um, in bed with this person and let them continue because it don't make sense like from where to where how did you rise here but obviously he saw somebody that was like his getaway ticket or get out of, of the family ticket and he had to take up that chance or use it because now this it don't make sense because honestly I've, got, I've just got to say it like how do you as a person like you grew up with your family all this while you know your family then somebody coming uh, somebody came somewhere from nowhere and the person is telling you about your family that and you like oh yeah you're right about my family like make it make sense it don't make sense honestly it doesn't i don't know anybody who think or who would see this and be like yeah well um it makes sense no it doesn't but candice is actually right on this one let's go on loyal to the people that they should be the most loyal to so no sympathy for prince harry but a lot of sympathy for king charles mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult for the Queen to forgive him. It's very difficult for William and Kate to forgive him, given the awful things he wrote about them in that book, Spare. Um, I guess if he was to apologise, then forgiveness might follow. And, and there were certainly some in this country, Candace, hoping for reconciliation. Mm. But, you know, your thesis is that basically she's using him she's using the fact that he's a British prince, and it's all about her. Now, what I'm interested in. Is it just about money? Because they appear to have been paid a lot of money, uh, in many cases for not producing very much content. Is it just about money and fame? Or do you think, Candace Owens, that somewhere within Meghan there are political ambitions? I actually don't believe that there are any political ambitions there, uh, mostly because she's simply not well liked, right? And she's not a very good actress. <laughs> I saw right through it from the very beginning when she was pretending she was going to stay in the royal family. I was the first commentator that said, this woman is going to make it back to Los Angeles. I, I just saw her coming. So she's, she's not that shrewd. And unfortunately, right now, that sort of politicking is not finding a home in America. Uh, we don't want bad faith actors we don't want a bunch yes. of people that are going to opine about racism and sexism and misogyny we want people that are being honest about the fact that we have a lot of issues in this country and we're not going to beat them by hating one another and so she's not a perfect fit like i said she caught a moment and there was very much a government incentive mm. to do mm. cause so much division with blm but she's not mm. she's not going to run in politics she's very happy where she is in a multi-million dollar mansion lunching with oprah that that was her dream and she got it no, you may be right. I mean, I, I must admit, I'd always thought there was a political ambition, but uh, maybe you're right. And yet, you know, when it comes to whichever company they work with, Netflix, whoever it is, they've been paid all these large sums of money to produce little content or a load of rubbish. At what point, at what point does Los Angeles wake up and say, you know what, these guys are no good? I think that's starting to happen now. I mean, the executive over at Spotify pretty much said that these are a bunch of lazy people with bad ideas that feel entitled to money. It's the ultimate entitlement is what you're taking a look at. And I don't know if any person listening to this program actually took the time to listen to the podcast that she produced on Spotify. I did. It was a source of great humor for me. And I played some of those tidbits on the show. It's, it's weird. It's raspy. It's her yeah. talking about her dreams, talking about, you know, the patriarchy patriarchy and feminism and just all of the buzzwords that get you invited to the right parties in LA but there's no substance behind it and as I said the reason why it failed is because people want authenticity and unfortunately they aren't getting that from this couple Not anymore uh, you know so they're just going to keep what being shuffled from award show to award show given awards for basically right, doing exactly. absolutely nothing but acquiescing to a government narrative it's quite pathetic and it's sad <laughs> because Harry was so <laughs> well liked you know he was kind of like the bad boy prince people liked him because he seemed oh, so authentic and now he was he loved seems, yeah you know, he really was yeah he, he was, was i loved he him was the, he was the good looking he was good looking he was charming he did his tours in afghanistan he was in the front line he was fun uh, he had lots of pretty girlfriends he'd yeah. go down to the pub he'd do things that nor he'd do things candace that most young lads d either do or would like to do i think actually and i remember asking my daughters i asking yeah. my daughters when they were teenagers early teenagers what they thought of the royal family and they both said oh the royal family it's so cool 
Now, I'd never thought of the royal family as cool, but Harry did make it cool, didn't he? He did make it cool, and then all of that went away, and he became very whiny, and he went the way of what we call modern psychotherapy, where therapists sit across from you and tell you that every little thing that ever happened to you makes you a special victim, and no matter how horrendous you act, yeah. once you receive that status of victimhood, everyone must understand. And that was the thing for me that I thought was just so disgusting, was you know utilizing Princess Diana, someone who was very well loved in America and pretending that you were speaking for her from the grave, which is something that Meghan Markle did, you know, this Freudian transfer of I'm now Princess Diana and I must be saved. It's, it's sickening and manipulative. And her reasons for doing that was that she thought that it would reserve her as untouchable as if any person, any person with a, a brain believes that what Princess Diana would have wanted was for her two sons not to be speaking. What Princess Diana would have wanted was for her granddaughter, Charlotte, to be placed in a book for millions of dollars right uh, she threw a temper tantrum and upset megan and megan cried in the heap on the floor it was just written, written in spare throwing your niece under the bus uh, let, let's just dissolve that illusion that princess diana would have been okay with that because she would not have been okay with any of that yeah. no of course not no of course not of course not because obviously this this just goes to tell you how much of a narcissistic person and how much of a selfish person she is coming like honestly lots of people loved harry it made the um, royal family look good like lots of people wanted to be so part of the royal family at least even if it just for a day or for a moment lots of people loved that idea of it or loved it but now all of a sudden it's almost unrecognizable and they're wondering like what is going on now you understand why people are raged about it like okay now how did you go from here to here and how is it that all of a sudden you know you no longer want to be part of your family your family is almost like a complete stranger to you and it don't make sense and honestly i've said it before if somebody comes to tell you that your family is your problem and the person is drifting you away from your family or because they are not in good terms with their family or they don't have a good relationship with their family and you are thinking the person is doing you a favor <laughs> dust your slippers and run see Dev Adam, when Eve was deceived by the serpent, who was told first? Adam. Eve knew not to eat from the tree, but she did anyways because the serpent told her every nice things about it. But at the end of the day, what happened? They disobeyed God. But it was interesting at that moment. It was fun when she was eating from the tree, when she was not supposed to eat it. And now the exact same, let's bring it back to the, our favorite um couples now harry is enjoying all of the time and fun with not being part of the family not being part of the royal family and stuff and uh, one leg in one leg out my question is now that now with everything that they are doing what are they teaching their kids because obviously they've got kids the kids are watching now the kids will be asking oh mommy and daddy what happened what what about our grandfather our grandmother from both sides you don't have relationship with them or we don't see them come around or we don't see them often as other kids do or as other kids see theirs what is happening so what are they going to tell them or what are gonna they're gonna teach them because i hope if the kids do the exact same to them they would be happy I just want to believe that but this is an interesting conversation and candice owens is right here but this is an old video actually i just decided to pull it up because there were some things that were said here that actually make sense and that we also see in the current um happenings between these two um between the successes but let me know what your thoughts are regarding this i would really love you to share that you can share all the useful information you think might be really helpful make sure to like comment and subscribe and all of that stuff and until next time see you in the next video